Today, you are going to learn how to shape your type. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my CSS tutorial, but you might want to expand your knowledge by watching this full CSS course at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. So when you're dealing with a large group of text, like multiple paragraphs, whether that's on a blog post or an about page or a landing page, and you also have images, whether it be they be vector graphics or photographs that show up, you know, within the actual text and the paragraphs, I, the standard convention is just to, you know, have the, the text position left or right in, in a block level form. Everything's very, you know, rectangular in a sense. Well, using the shape outside property in CSS, we can completely change that up and make the text form how we want it to. So for instance, using this little uh, editor, which I'm going to show you exactly how to use, we can create all sorts of cool different things. Uh, and I'll show you exactly how to use this. So here's some examples here. We got uh, we got Patrick from SpongeBob. You can see how it's just going around him. The text is. Uh, here is a kind of like a teardrop. And there's a lot of different things in, in ways that you can apply this effect. I'm just kind of scaling things up here. You can even animate it, which is really cool. All right, so for today's question, which would you prefer? And this is more of a poll rather than a question. Which would you prefer that I cover next week? A Pug.js crash course or design systems? All right, so Pug.js is formerly known as Jade, and it's a different way to write HTML. And design systems are a relatively new buzzword in the design world. And I will show you how you know how to create them and what they are. All right, so these are both big topics that I will eventually cover on the channel, but judging on which one is most preferred based on which one you prefer in the comments, I, I will cover it first sometime next week. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm here in my console. I'm just gonna create um, a new folder in my code folder, uh, make directory, we'll just call this shapes out and we'll <clears throat> cd into that and then run code period and i'll open visual studio code in the current folder and this is a free code editor if you're unaware from microsoft and it's popular and let's go ahead and make an index.html um, we'll hit exclamation point enter for some quick html boilerplate we'll put in link to get our css file attached here and I'm just going to make it a little bit larger by hitting uh, Control Plus, and then also, oops, sorry, Control B, and then we're going to put in main.css, and I'm not going to use SAS for this because this is going to be pretty quick and easy and straightforward. Um, so now, uh, what I want to do is we'll put in the HTML first. So I'm going to hit Control B to get rid of that sidebar. And we're going to simply put in um, an H1 element. And inside, we'll just say awesome laptops, All right? Just some filler content. And also a paragraph element. And I'm going to type in lorem. And um, I'm not, I don't think this, I don't know if this comes by default. I can't remember if I installed this extension already. We're going to just type lorem and hit enter. And it'll generate some text for us. Um, so what I'm going to do is hit lorem again. And then I'll give us a little bit more to work with. And then I'll just take this um, with this line selected, hit shift alt and the down arrow key to replicate this line here. All right, so um, I think we'll do it one more time like that. All right, I just wanna have a decent amount of text to work with. All right, so um, now let's go ahead and save this, hit control B. Um, we'll go to our main CSS file, and I just want to get some quick uh, CSS structured here um, just to get things set up. And this has nothing to do um, with the, uh, the the purpose of this tutorial. Um, I'm going to put um, height. I'm going to calculate 100%. So we want to set the, um, the viewport height to 100% by default, um, and I'm going to use the calc function to remove AEM of padding that I'm going to apply just on the body element itself. 
So this padding is going to give us a lot of um, white space from the edge of the browser. So it just um, makes it look a lot better. And then also our H1 element, I'm going to get rid of um, the default margin at the top. And I'm just going to have margin bottom right here for this value at 30 pixels. It'll push the, the content down. And then our paragraphs, we're going to say line height um, 1.7 EM. Oh. And as always, I'm going to use my favorite font, Montserrat. There we go. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So now, Control-B, I'm going to right-click on index.html, click Open with Live Server, which uses the Live Server extension. And here we go. So this is our, our uh, page. It looks, you know, fairly straightforward. It's just some text, nothing exciting. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to go here to what's called Oliver, no, o Olivier Forge, for, okay, this dude's foreign, <clears throat> I'm a stupid American, I don't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but you can see the URL up here, hopefully, I'll also link it in the description if you can remind me and I can remember. And what we want to do is, uh, it, it's, as I mentioned here, it says pick an example to get started. So picture of the moon. Um, a polygon shape and then you can use multiple shapes so use whichever you want but first I'm just going to click on a picture of the moon all right so um, we can see if you click this we have this cool sort of editor um, from which we can start to manipulate information now I'm going to drag this in by the way because my head's probably covering some of it so there that should be pretty good right there all right, so what exactly is happening here? Well, first, if we hit X, um, we can get out of this edit mode. And to get back into this mode, you simply select one of these objects, and you have all these properties here. Um, you can also see there's a page setup section. And this is just, but what it's doing is it's kind of like a visual editor for generating um, uh, your different uh, just CSS properties and values like margins and such. Um, so at the end, you're going to hit get CSS. but First, let's look at this and see what's happening. So we can see this is based on an image. Um, it doesn't have to be based on an image, as you'll see shortly. Um, and we can see we have a dimensions, and we have margins. And the margins are automatically adjusted when you move this thing around, as you can see. Um, also, uh, when we see, uh, basically, the main property is shape outside. And these are the different attributes to it. Um, and we can see it, the type. There's a, several different types, so circles, one, ellipse, polygon, inset, um, image, and we're going to take a look at a few of those. And then uh, we could also see we have a ref box, and you can experiment by changing this, and you can see how it may adjust uh, the appearance, but we're going to leave it at content box. And the way you use this, um, let's go ahead go up here and let's just create float all right so this is creating one from scratch this is just their example down there um, let's go ahead and we're not going to use an image what we'll do instead is we'll go to shape outside we'll say circle and now we can adjust the size of the circle and you can get an idea of what it's going to look like based on how you move this thing around all right so let's just leave it like this we'll hit exit and we'll get click get, uh, get CSS all right so the first one is the one that's just a div without the image, so we know it's shape playground one. We'll go ahead and copy this, and then we're going to go back to our index HTML, and I'm going to put in just underneath our H1 element and over the text. We're going to put div class equals circle. Hit save. We'll go to main, and then we'll paste in that rule set and just change this class to um, circle and now let's go ahead and save and there you go very easy stuff as you can see and you can see as we you, you drag in the side of the browser it just automatically uh, wraps around this circle that we have and of course we can adjust this if we want it to float right of course we can do that so now we have this circle sort of thing floating uh, to the right very very simple and of course you can adjust these um, these properties all, all you want however you want the width the height all that stuff you don't have to use that editor it's just kind of like a starting point 
All right, so let's try to um, do another one. Let's do uh, this. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. Actually, I didn't even have to do that. You could comment the other one out if you want to keep them around. Uh, we're going to make this one a polygon class, and we'll go back to that editor. All right, and let's just refresh. Go back here. We're going to create a float, and this time we'll use a polygon. So the polygon is really cool because it allows you uh, to take what are essentially kind of like anchor points and move them around. And you can even create new anchor points if you wish and delete them just by hitting the delete key. So let's move this around and move this one down here. All right, that looks good. So we'll get out of here, get CSS. All right, it's playground one still. So now we can, I'm just going to take the properties and not the uh, selector itself. We'll go to main CSS. This is polygon. And then take that, save it. And there you go. Very cool stuff. So you can even, for instance, change this um, to 100%. And we'll see if that gives us the desired effect. We're going to put height 100%. And this would only work, by the way, if we uh, since we added this height up here. And there you go. So you can really control them however you wish. And of course, if you want it to be, you know, if you want it to appear a certain way on a phone as opposed to a desktop, you can add media queries to, to make adjustments to these values, just like you would any other CSS uh, property and value. Now let's talk about uh, using an actual image. All right. So uh, hit control B. Uh, we're going to put in an images folder and I have a laptop uh, uh, graphic that uh, it's free, 100% free to use and it's a PNG file. And so I'm just going to drag this in here. I'm going to remember to link this, by the way, um, in the description here in YouTube. Uh, and what you actually can see, it's a PNG file and it has a transparent background. Um, it doesn't have to be a PNG to do this. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can kind of get this inset into the text. All right. So what we'll do is we'll put in an image tag. Let's get rid of this. Image source equals images forward slash laptop dot PNG. And we'll also, um, well, we could just say image here. We'll use that as a selector. And we'll go back to this editor here. And let me make sure I'm not cutting things off. There we go. And let's try again. So we'll choose this one, create float, and we'll select an image. So here's, um, this isn't the actual, uh, let me get the actual folder up here correctly. I want to make sure I'm using the same exact uh, code. So there we go. All right, so here's our um, our a little image. And as you can see, it's behaving by the, the default nature uh, where it's just wrapped around, you know, the, the box around the image. And that's because we haven't applied the shape outside property to it. So now we could choose polygon and we can begin to wrap these around the area of the image where we don't want text to affect it. So we only have three points with this, uh, this polygon, but we can just click and add another one and there we go. Something like that. And let's float it to the right. This could be a little bit quirky to, to mess with, but really um, you don't have to use the CSS properties it's generating anyways. So now we have our laptop, which is Playground 2. And let's just copy this stuff right here. And then we'll go back to main. And we're just going to put in image and then paste that stuff in. So now if we save it, there we go. So let's make it larger. That kind of looks bad. So we'll change this to like 600 pixels, get rid of the height value. And there we go. 
Also, we can get rid of the margin as well. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so another way that you can actually do this is if you're working with a, a transparent PNG value where there's obviously areas of it that are transparent, as is the case here, uh, because as you can see, this was the uh, image that I saved. Well then, what we could do, instead of using a content box polygon, we can use the URL property, and it will use the alpha part, the, the parts with low opacity, I, I believe it's under 50%, where it will automatically use that as uh, the way to determine where and where not to wrap text around. So we could put URL, um, I'll put in images, and this is forward slash laptop PNG, and We'll go ahead and save it, and there we go. And you can see in this context, it's a little bit different because it will make things a little bit closer together, um, but still, it works automatically in this fashion. Awesome stuff. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. Make sure that you answer in the comments today's question, which is which would you prefer I cover next week, a Pug.js crash course or the topic of design systems? All right, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.